you one of the millions of Americans suffering from unwanted fecal matter getting trapped in your rectum? Well, you're in luck. Because now in just three simple steps, our fantastic new product can give you the cleanest colon on your block. Introducing the Anal Squeegee. How does our new technology work, you ask? Well, first, the patented anal squeegee is lubed and then gently inserted into the affected orifice. Step two requires the simple push of a button, which activates an umbrella-like apparatus, creating a fecal-proof seal between itself and the lining wall of your colon. The third and final step is to slowly remove the anal squeegee from your soon-to-be sparkly clean rectum. Don't let a dirty anus affect your life any longer. With this special TV offer, you can get the anal squeegee for just three easy payments of $9.95. And if you call now, we'll include the After Squeege Power Cleansing Anal Douche, absolutely free, for a small charge of $9.95. The Power Cleansing Anal Douche is powered by a single 9-volt battery, and once inserted, is then activated by a simple push of a button, which releases a refreshing blast of warm water through its patented pressure release system as the user slowly evacuates the device from their anus to give your colon a shine like no other. So please, don't wait. Call the number on your screen to receive your fantastic, doctor-recommended anal squeegee and complimentary power cleansing anal douche. Hi, I'm a proctologist, and I recommend this wonderful product to all of my patients. Its patented technology is safe and easy for home use by all ages. Don't take our word for it. Listen firsthand to what the thousands of owners across the nation have to say about their squeegee experience. Before anal squeegee, I had to go through so much work before I let my man pound my poop hole. But now, pre and post wash are a cinch, and the after squeegee is just a dream. Call now and become one of the thousands of Americans to receive this wonderful new life-changing product, and we guarantee you will not be disappointed. It's the Brain and Mohan Show. It's the Brain and Mohan Show. Brain and Mohan Show. It's the Brain and Mohan Show. Guys, this is Muhammad El Darwish and Brain Mountain, and this is the Brain and Moham Show. We're coming to you today. Uh, hold on, let me check the date here. It's uh, June twenty seventh. So uh, June twenty seventh, we're coming at you. We got a clip show planned today. Oh, a clip show, eh? Clip show. And uh, you know, how's it going, Brain? How you doing today? I'm doing pretty good, uh, considering some things, but, you know, it's all right. Yeah, well, I, I see you got some crazy contraption going on there. Did you just create something just a second ago? I made a pop filter out of a old t-shirt, or actually it looks like a brand new t-shirt, but I don't know where it came from. It says something about Mount Isa for Everest, and I've never been there. And I uh, noticed last time, like just then, when I exhaled it would have picked up a big loud sound yeah even though it's got a, its own little filter on it it's it's not so great so this really helps a lot nice uh, well i'm glad to hear and, that and you have my the one that i bought is on on your mic so. yeah and it works great thank you uh so i did google the word chaz and apparently it stands for capitol hill autonomous zone that's what right. we couldn't remember yes. the, last week so another thing is um uh, we'll get to that. Actually, we'll get to another correction from last week in a second. But uh, we had some big news happen in the last week. There was some primary elections. Um, Alexandria Ocasio Cortez cruised to re-election uh, with about seventy percent of the vote, and um, against her uh, opponent uh, Caruso Cabrera. Hmm. Um, they thought that uh, if they just they thought that if they ran someone with a name like Alexandria Ocasio Cortez, I think they ran they ran against her with a Michelle Caruso Cabrera. They just right. thought they could trick people with like a similar sounding like three three right. word name. It didn't work. Uh, she won re-election, and uh, our first clip is uh, of her 
after she got elected. You are the reason why this victory is here tonight. And this victory was extremely important. You know, Alona alluded to it earlier, but when we won in 2018, we were called a fluke by politicians, by media, by um, by so many people that are kind of tend to be part of this more powerful um, establishment. And we were deemed a fluke. We were deemed an accident. I saw sophisticated analysis um, that I won because of my last name. And, um, and frankly, that had an impact, I think, on my entire first term. So uh, what, what are your thoughts on that? I'm not really sure. Um, well, it was a big night for progressives, uh, you know, the Bernie side of the party. One, one, you know, AOC was one of them. Yeah. Uh, she, she won re-election. And it, as, as she mentioned, it's a very important, uh, that second election, very important. Uh, now she's established herself. Uh, it's not a fluke. They, you know, she was saying there, there was, right. yeah. Um, there's another uh, really big, huge news from that front was uh, another progressive candidate uh, beat a 32-year, like a 16-term incumbent um, New York Congressman Elliot Engel, who was the the chairman of the um, Foreign Affairs Committee, and he was he was considered a moderate Democrat who sides uh, heavily with Israel and takes money from corporations and APAC. And, you know, he's a corporate Democrat that, you know, kind of getting old up there. So um, a much younger uh, African-American progressive crushed him in, in uh, they're still counting the votes. But uh, here's a little a little taste of this new um, congressman, Jamal Bowman. Let me tell you something right now. Elliot Engel, and I'll say his name once, used to say that he was a thorn in the side of Donald Trump. But you know what Donald Trump is more afraid of than anyone, anything else? A black man with power. That is what Donald Trump is afraid of. So if the results continue to bear out, as they are bearing out this evening, and we get to Congress, it will be our job to hold Donald Trump accountable and to hold every elected official accountable that continues to be beholden to corporate interests that continues to be holding to the wealthy and is not fighting for the poor and is not fighting for the working class in our, our country. I didn't know where to stop that one right there, but uh, hmm. what, do, what do you think of that, man? Yeah, that's pretty awesome. I like that guy. <laughs> do you hear what he's talking about? Those are the things, those are the things that, you know, you know, we were hoping that uh, we were going to be hearing about this, this time around. Uh, uh, you know, we want to get money out of politics, corporate interests out of politics, make it more about right. helping people and not exactly. just helping the donors. And it's all about being reelected. It's so annoying that the 32 year con person, the one, Elliot Engel, the one who lost, you know, I heard he's a nice guy. And I, I also heard that he got too comfortable. You know, he's living in another state and he didn't really come back to the district to help them out or anything. Yeah. Um, so if you lose that, you know, edge where you're in the streets hustling for the vote. Right. You could get, you know, you could get beat by one of these people because the people are suffering and they're sick and tired and fed up and there's, you know, they've had enough. Yeah. Um, making the party younger, making the party more diverse, uh, making making the party more progressive. This all happened the other day. There's another candidate too. This is actually really crazy. Um, in Kentucky, uh, the the establishment Democrat, you know, wing of the party, they, they handpicked this, this lady, Amy McGrath, uh, who, you know, I thought she was going to be fine and cruise, but apparently the progressive candidate is like basically virtually tied. They're still counting the mail-in ballots, but, uh, the progressive candidate came out of nowhere. Another younger, you know, in his, I don't know, thirties or forties, young black progressive. And here was him, uh, the, you know, the night where, his campaign did well and he might win he might not win but here's what he had to say that night on election night in uh, kentucky the other day now that's all right i wanted you to know we've already won we have defied the odds we have proven the doubters wrong we are showing what kentucky is made of right now and i am so proud of us 
I'm so proud. It's a lot of uh, a lot of power and emotion and and, and uh, so there's, yeah, there's a, there's there's a lot of uh, there's a lot in his voice and there's a lot of power in what he's saying and you know. Yeah, that one had a little music in there. I couldn't find the clip without the music. It was, um, it was pretty good music. <laughs> well, it's just there to, like, I don't know. It's just there to be there, apparently. Um, uh, the, I can't believe it. I can't believe how well... I mean, I, I wanted Bowman to win. Uh, he did. I believe I believe he did. And uh, I wanted... I think I wanted McGrath to win because I really want, you know... I think McGrath would perform better than a progressive, uh, like a moderate would perform better than a progressive in Kentucky. Um, but you know, if Booker ends up winning in Kentucky, I'm not mad. Uh, fuck, fuck it, let's go. Fuck it, let's go. Yeah, fuck, no, seriously, if these, if these, if we, the party is getting better. It's getting younger. It's getting more progressive. It's getting more diverse. Right. I love and what's happening. I, there definitely needs to be more younger people in politics because old people are from a long time ago when uh, things were a lot different than right now. Well, we've right tried now. it their way, haven't we? We tried it their way for a long time. Right. Uh, you know, what's funny is uh, you look at the generations underneath us. Have you noticed something about them? One is they're pretty fucked up, but they're kind of cool, like, you know. Yeah, it depends on who you're talking to, I guess. (laughs) But they are so not with Trump. They are so Mm. not with Trump at all. The generation below us, Gen Z or whatever. Very against Trump, which is I love it. And the future is going to not look like Trump. If they're voting, it's going to look more like Bernie. You know, it's going to look more like uh, Bernie's policies and shit in AOC. Bernie Um, Sanders. Yeah, don't you do a really good Bernie impression? <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I gotta have something gotta, to say. Like, yeah. um... uh, <laughs> I've heard it; it's pretty good. Um, so uh, Joe, Joe Biden's, um, you know, vice presidential uh, pick. It's apparently narrowed down to four, according to reports. Ooh. Yeah, and I, I heard uh, the other thing I wanted to correct from last week was um, I heard someone tell me that. Uh, you know how I said if Liz Warren gets chosen as vice president that the Republican governor can replace her with a Republican? Well, apparently in Massachusetts, the the legislature, the state legislature, has a super majority of Democrats. And someone said that they can, like, use procedures to, like, force it to be a Democrat and not a Republican. Ooh. But I don't know about that. I'm kind of like, eh, it still seems like I would still lean with my original um, pick of Harris being, just, just, just go with Harris. Again, uh... Who's, Liz, wait, who's Harris? Kamala Harris, the one we talked about last week, uh, the you know senator from California. Um, Warren might actually make a a really good Treasury Secretary. Uh, that was an interesting little article I stumbled stumbled on. Um, the, the article I think said something like a nightmare for Wall Street. Yeah, it's Wall Street's nightmare. Elizabeth Warren is a Treasury Secretary. It says here, if Joe Biden wins, uh, Warren is the favorite to become the nation's first woman treasury secretary, according to the Cohen Washington Research Group. What, what do you think of that? Do you think uh, treasury secretary would be a good job for her? Or? I, I don't I don't know. I don't a Treasury secretary. So uh, she's not the treasurer. She's a secretary. Well, no, she's the she's the top. She's the, she's in charge of the nation's banking. And, and oh, she's the in treasury. charge of all the money. Yeah. That would and be that's, pretty. That's Warren. Yeah, that would be pretty good, right? She would be be able to yeah. have power over Wall Street. She would be able to Ooh. maybe potentially break up big banks. I think that's yeah. She, I think she would do good at that. Right, and she would also potentially have she would have an incredible impact on the policy on the fiscal policy, uh, holding watch you know um, holding uh, what's it called uh, predatory loaner lenders accountable for, yeah. for tactics that are unfair. I would like that, and I think that's, uh, you know, I think she treading do down the right job. path. Yeah. So there was a, a rally in Tulsa, uh, actually, you know, it was right after we recorded last week, um, our, our episode number seven. Um, there was a rally in Tulsa with Donald Trump where we were kind of expecting, I know I was expecting it to be a very big rally because they said that a million people registered for tickets, and they said that they were expecting to have... 60,000 or more people. Yeah, but a lot of those, most of them were just like joke registrations. Yeah. Um, did you hear, like, they said that it was K-pop fans, stands. I don't know what the hell that means, but K-pop stands and uh, TikTok users. 
Yeah. And they uh, they used names like Ray Sist <laughs> and and like you know hilarious stuff like that. And they just like all registered. Hey, would like you they blow were me? Gonna, yeah, <laughs> you know, like they were gonna like you know register and and they were like you know gonna buy tickets. So like they they prepared for like this huge you know uh, event, and obviously they were all it was just a big joke. So they prepared for a giant event, like even like outdoor seating for extra people, and like and, and almost no one showed yeah. up. Well, they had an outdoor area for for people. I don't think it was uh, there was seating, but they were well, expecting... an outdoor area, yeah, yeah. for Trump for said, extra people because they expected it to overflow to outside. Yeah. Trump said specifically said before the rally that they never had an empty seat, and they're definitely not going to have an empty seat in Tulsa. And they were mostly empty seats. It was mostly empty seats. They did a good job of trying to make it look like there were people in those seats. They put shirts, they put signs, they put, you know, they tried to fill everything up as best they could. Hmm. Um, the outdoor area had to be taken down, uh, and Trump was really upset about that. The reports were that he was, when he was flying on the plane, you know, to the rally, that he was getting, you know, the news that, that it wasn't really filling up like they expected. That yeah. made him mad. He apparently yelled at his staff uh, all the way there, and then he had a really terrible rally, in my opinion, where he said some things that I'm sure he would want to take back. Mm-hmm. Um, we're gonna we're gonna get into a couple of those things. Um, have you heard about any of this, by the way? I heard about it. I haven't heard uh, any uh, any of what he said or, or clips or anything. I didn't see it, you know. All right. Well, let me. Play. I know it happened. Right. Well, here, let me play a clip just to get us rolling here, because there was a lot going on. There's a lot to unpack with this rally. I've got myself a problem, General, because I'm wearing leather bottom shoes, which is good if you're walking on flat surfaces. It's not good for ramps. It had no handrail. It was like an ice skating. I said, General, there's no way I can make it down that ramp without falling on my ass, General. So I said, General, get ready, because I may grab you so fast. (laughs) Because I can't fall. (laughs) Uh, None of that made any... That was the most incoherent... uh, What? Did you hear the light applause? The, uh, uh, what is it? Okay, you can't walk on flat surfaces with leather-soled shoes? Yeah. Why not? So this is something that he spent 10 to 15 minutes talking about, was his, his walk down the ramp and why he had to walk down the ramp slowly. Remember remember that shit? No. What's this whole ramp thing? Okay, so... Did he walk down a ramp all stupid? He walked down a ramp all stupid. It was a big thing. They were saying that it's because he's sick and it's because he, he can't walk and he's, like, getting... He looked very strange doing it. And now he's saying it's because it was so slippery and it was so hot that day and I had leather bottom shoes. I said, General. <laughs> I said, General. Doesn't he sound like a stand-up comic? Like this is some sort of Netflix special? He's a fucking idiot. He sounds like a fucking idiot. <laughs> he's, uh, he, he's completely incoherent. I mean, I know I am sometimes too, but... Um, I don't think I'd ever hear you talk like quite like this, though. Yeah, it's just... He doesn't make nothing he says makes any sense to me at all. It just a complete. It's it's you know it's like talking to somebody that just you know did too much ecstasy and lost half their fucking brain. Oh well, that's actually uh, would be a, that's a fascinating thing to talk about because the the mental acuity thing is going to be an issue in this election because we have Donald Trump accusing Biden of having his mental uh, status have declined, and also Biden. Of course, and everyone else, you and me, says, you, you says can, that um, he's have, Trump is losing his mind. So, yeah, so people, he is. There's losing people his, who he's think lost both of his them. fucking mind. There's people who definitely think that both of them are too old and losing their, their minds. Both of them. Um, Biden's uh, at least coherent when you, he speaks. You and me watched that debate with Biden and Bernie. You remember that shit? I don't specifically remember but, it. No. But you remember Biden definitely did not seem. Like he was losing his mind. No, yeah, he was answering all the questions really good. Right, exactly. He actually was. Bernie was kind of like, I, I, I could see on Bernie's face that he was like, God damn it, Biden! Like you're stop doing so good. Like right, know, yeah, cut um, the fucking shit. It, Bernie, asshole. Bernie didn't have anywhere to to attack. You know what I mean? He was trying. Really, really strong um, primary. I think uh, that ended up between you know two pretty strong candidates who I think would both win. This would be a fantastic chance for Bernie to become president if he was the guy. If he had won. I think right now, 
before before coronavirus and before the economy went down there was a little bit of risk there was a little bit of like uh maybe you know but, you know maybe it's he'd lose but after this it seems like any democrat right now in this climate i, th- I think any democrat would be ahead yeah um here here's another clip from that horrible tulsa rally or if you could have heard the reports the reports oh it's covid it's this i've gotten it's by the way it's a disease without question has more names than any disease in history I can name Kung Flu. I can name 19 different versions of names. Many call it a virus, which it is. Many call it a flu. What difference? Yeah, he's a fucking moron. Yeah. And what about that term? Would you consider that a racist term, Kung Flu? Uh, um, I, 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 I don't, I don't. Yeah, you don't seem like you would want to be the one to d- decide I, I, if it I, was I, I or not. I don't know that it's racist. It's definitely very in fucking appropriate. You know, it's, just, yeah. it's not appropriate. Well, calling all. it the calling it that, I think it's both to, it's both to you know. Uh, actually, there's three things going on. One is it's it's taking the heat off him. Putting it on someone else, China. It's con- right. You know. Uh, second thing is he's appealing to the racists and the uh, deplorable a- right. aspects of his own supporting base, and it's kicking our ass. Right. He's only owning the libs. That all goes under the one one thing. And then I think the other thing too is he's he's trying to make it seem like it's not as big a deal as it as it really is, uh, with the amount of people dying. Oh yeah, you know, if cases. we stop testing, we won't have any cases. You know, make it go away on paper. That's, yeah. how he's, that's how he's used to doing business. Right. Well, you know, speaking of which... Uh... When you do testing to that extent, you're going to find more people. You're going to find more cases. So yeah, I said exactly. to my people, slow the testing down, please. They test and they test. We got tests that people don't know what's going on. We got tests. We got another one over here. The yeah. fuck? Yeah, yeah he's literally... Um, a raving lunatic. He's yeah. He's completely insane. And and if if he's not um, like uh, mentally retarded, then he's just a fucking asshole. <laughs> right. He's he's either really really stupid or he's an asshole. Yeah, or both. He's probably yeah. I'm pretty sure he's actually a really really stupid asshole. Right. Which is different than a, what you were saying. A earlier. really, really stupid, big, gaping asshole. Yeah, like, it's just huge. You could fit the sun inside of it. Mm. Well, after this rally, he uh, apparently got back into his. Uh, I forget if it was the plane or the helicopter. He, he got he got into his flying apparatus and um, flying apparatus. You know, continued to lay into his campaign staff, and uh, when he got back to the. White House, I believe, he was caught on camera doing his walk of shame. Do you see those pictures of oh, him yeah. looking like the Sasquatch? I did with the stain on the on the <laughs> on the collar of his shirt. There was a pretty gnarly stain on the collar of his shirt. And yeah. the very very sad sad. Fa- I was yeah. really you can't made, fake that. It made me smile a lot, <laughs> dude. He looked. He had his tie untied. He looked, he looked like a like oh, a boy. like an ape that just lost of the the fight for uh the female in the group you know what i mean <laughs> a defeated like like Yo. he was the alpha ape and like now he's just been defeated because yeah. this other ape was like yo <laughs> fuck you you fucking idiot boom bitch and he was just like oh shit maybe i am a stupid idiot bitch why don't people love me <laughs> yeah well, here's another thing. Uh, this is also ties into it. Is um, there's a book coming out by um, Mary Trump, who is the niece of Donald Trump, and uh, I heard something about uh, a book, and Trump said she can't do it. Yeah, so Trump, you know, went to court to file a you know, cease and desist or something, an injunction, and um, apparently the Trump family claimed that no amount of money, quote, no amount of money can ameliorate the loss if Mary Trump is allowed to publish her book. Um, It would cause irreparable harm to their family. Okay, so that's exactly why it should be released. Well, yeah. I I don't know what's coming out, but I think Trump is If it's something that would cause that much harm to your family, it means that you did something fucked up and wrong. 
and yeah. you probably deserve it. Yeah, well, they're not. They're not, they're apparently saying that it's gonna be it's gonna be bad for them. Uh, and I can I think you can see Trump is if, is if erratic somebody and releasing fearful. information about you is going to make something really bad for you, it probably means you did something you shouldn't have done, and you need to be punished for right. it. You well, know what so I mean? Trump is getting hammered from all sides. He had a plan. The plan is not going according to plan. It's not going according to that plan. And now Good. he doesn't know what the hell to do. Good. He's getting attacked uh, from all sides. Good. Yeah, it's awesome. And 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 he's he got a book on the left with John Bolton, The Room Where It Happened. Boom. And then he got a book on the right, Mary Trump's book. He, he, the, the title is ridiculous. Give the old one through to the face. Too much and never enough. How my family created the world's most dangerous man. Is that a good title? It's a great title. <laughs> um, 2016 Republican candidate Carly Fiorina uh, for president says she is endorsing Biden. That's kind of notable. Uh, there's actually kind of a long list now of prominent Republicans that are not supporting Trump or they are act- actively supporting Biden. Oh, interesting. That's nice. Yeah. I like that. As for Democrats, good job, you won't guys. find any fucking Democrats good job, that guys. like Trump. You, you know, won't. we're all on the same team. Get rid of this fucking asshole. Yeah, well, do you know about Carly Fiorina? I mean, you can put a, 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 like a Republican in the White House as, as long as they're not completely yeah. fucking insane. Right, like this? Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> you, do you know anything about Carly Fiorina, this lady? No. So she ran for president in 2016. She was one of the many, many Republicans running for president. I don't know if you remember how many there I were. No, um, don't remember at all. Right, yeah. Well, uh, she, Trump called her ugly. Trump attacked her looks, and that's how she lost. That's how her campaign fell well, apart. Trump's not a very good-looking woman himself. <laughs> no, he certainly isn't. But uh, he was he's, able he's to very pretty. bluster his way into the presidency. He was able to fake it till he make he made it. Uh, uh, hit, P- Pence, Pence delivered a speech. He, he put like where a he got on his, in his pants to make it look like he had a big dick, even though it's tiny. Yeah, uh, Pence. Pence basically got on his knees set, and filleted set, Trump. Set, set he said, off. "He said we need broad-shouldered leadership." Little, little he must have said the peanut, word "peanut of a penis." Yeah, dude. Uh, but like around the, when he was running um, in 2016, uh, Pence was like, "We need broad-shouldered leadership," and he used the word "broad-shouldered" like seven times in the speech, broad referring to Donald, Donald Trump as broad-shouldered. Broad-shouldered. Right. It's it's like oh, Hillary doesn't have broad shoulders. We need broad-shouldered leadership. We need we need really large. We shoulders. need a lady with bigger titties. <laughs> There's another thing that happened too. Another crazy thing that happened here. Uh, Trump's Trump had a disastrous town hall with Sean Hannity on Fox News the other day. Uh, he said some things that I think will, again, <laughs> just like the other clips, will will flabbergast you. Hmm. Um, let me see if I can find one of these clips here. Let's see. All right. Here, here's so this is in um, Sean Hannity asked him asked Trump uh, about what his second term agenda would be, you know, like mm-hmm. what's his priorities, what's his um, uh, agenda going to look like if he's elected to a second term. Okay. This is a good question that really you should, any person running for president should be asked. Yeah. Let's see how he answers. Stake in this election as you compare and contrast and what is one what of your top priority items for a second term? Well, one of the things that will be Really great. You know, the word experience is still good. I always say talent is more important than experience. I've always said that. But the word experience is a very important word. It's in a very important meaning. I never did this before. I never slept over in Washington. I was in Washington, I think, 17 times. All of a sudden, I'm president of the United States. You know the story. I'm riding down Pennsylvania Avenue with our first lady, and I say, this is great. But I didn't know very many people in Washington. It wasn't my thing. I was from Manhattan, from New York. Now I know everybody, and I have great people in the administration. You make some mistakes, like, you know, an idiot like Bolton, all he wanted to do is drop bombs on everybody. You don't have to drop bombs on everybody. Mm. Right. So again, the question was, what were your priorities if you were elected to a he second term? answer the question. I don't know what the hell he just said. I don't, I don't know yet. Uh, I think he was saying that he has experience now, but he kind of didn't really say it effectively. No, he didn't say anything, really. It was kind of like a double talk, but he doesn't know. He probably doesn't even know what double talk is. He's just it's, that stupid. Yeah, well, it's not just stupid. It's terribly undisciplined for a person running for president. You should have these <laughs> answers ready. Yes, is, yeah, exactly. This is a softball question from Hannity. It's, a guy who also gets on his knees It's just like, oh, well, you know, I have experience and, you know, 
and this and that, blah, 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 blah. Right, but the way he said, said it, experience is, the way he said it was fucking psychotic. Yeah, it he, doesn't make any sense. It was completely incoherent. And here's the thing that blows my mind. If you're, if you want experience, uh, Biden's been in the Congress for like 50 fucking years. And he's got experience. Or he's been, in, he's I mean, been in Trump the government. Trump ran as a businessman. He's got no experience. Right, in, but now in, he's got in, three years, four years of experience. So of, now we need to reelect him because it was such a great first term. No. Fuck it, fuck it. Yeah. Fuck him, um, fuck him. Fuck him, fuck him, fuck him, <laughs> butthole. Fuck, fuck him, ma, fuck it, a butt. So, uh, Biden um, was in Pennsylvania recently and he uh, had a little speech and uh, he said something that I think was a very effective attack against Trump, something that I think I want to highlight. Um, here, check it out. He's like a child. Mm -hmm. Can't believe this has happened to him. All his whining and self-pity. Well, this pandemic didn't happen to him. It happened to all of us. And his job isn't to whine about it. His job is to do something about it, to lead. <laughs> See, he actually said something that made fucking sense, you, you, you know, uh, and, and all kind of like coherently and uh, logically. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you know what? There's Definitely a lot of a way better mental health than the other guy. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, I am picking these, you know, these things a little bit out of context, but we're putting them into we're we're, we're putting it into a broader picture. Um, clearly, there are times when Biden says something stupid or he's stuttering. He has a Everybody stutter. Everybody says something stupid. Yes, and, and Obama There's has a, a stutter difference. too. Exactly. There's a difference between the Trump stupidity, which is like. There's just really something else to it. There really is. And then the Biden stupidity, which is like, oh, he made a mistake. He said the wrong thing. He said, you know, uh, he said something the other, a few weeks ago, I think, that got him into some trouble where he said, if, you, if you're still deciding between me and Trump, you ain't black, which he apologized for. I don't really think it's that big a deal. I hear most people aren't really that upset about that. But people mm. who are upset about it already fucking hate the Democrats and Biden and are already probably either not voting or voting for Trump. Right. Um, so the town hall disaster that I was talking about earlier, um, here's another clip from that, uh, which this one is the one that takes the cake, I think. Here's a guy who doesn't talk. Nobody hears him. Whenever he does talk, he can't put two sentences together. I don't want to be nice or unnice, okay? But, I mean, the man can't speak. And he's going to be your president because some people don't love me, maybe. And, you know, all I'm doing is doing my job. You know, it's one of those things where, like, uh, he's talking about someone else, but he's really talking about himself. Projection, yeah, absolutely. And he said something there that really, you know, w didn't it shock you? He said, he's going to be your president. Yeah. He let it slip from his mind. He wasn't supposed to say that. Yeah. It, you know what this means? He doesn't believe he's going to win. <laughs> right now, he doesn't believe he's going to win. And that's fucking awesome. I don't think we ever had this kind of a thing going on uh, with the Hillary campaign, you know, Hillary versus Trump. It's definitely a very unique situation. Fox News came out with a swing state, a couple of battleground state polls. It has uh, Biden leading by two points in North Carolina. Uh, Biden's leading by one point in Texas, which is not a swing state. He's leading by two points. Biden is winning by two points in Georgia, according to Fox News poll, which is actually a really good mm. pollster. It's not like it's, it's a different uh, part you know, wing than the news. Um, and they got an A minus rating on 538. So it's a really, really good poster pollster. Uh, Florida, cool. Fox News poll, Florida, uh, Biden's winning by nine. Nice. 49 to 40 in Florida. Yo, if Biden wins Florida, it's fucking over. Yeah. Um, and Texas, forget about it. If, if Biden wins Florida and Texas, this shit is, this Done. is the biggest landslide in, in a long time. Another set of polls came out from a very good pollster recently called the New York Times and Siena poll came out. It has Biden leading by six points in Florida, 11 points in Wisconsin, 11 points in Michigan. Uh, Biden's leading by 10 points in Pennsylvania. So he's basically leading everywhere. Right. And he's leading nine in this one in North Carolina, which Fox News had a much smaller two point lead. But this mm. one has him leading nine. So that's great. Arizona, Trump versus Biden. Biden's leading by seven points in Arizona, according to the Siena New York Times poll. That's pretty awesome. Hell fucking yeah. So I've read enough polls. You get the idea. Trump is losing everything, including Texas. 
I think the most recent poll, the Des Moines Register, is also a really uh, A-plus rated pollster. They, they had Trump only winning by one in Iowa. Hmm. So this is a, the, the battleground states are shifting, and you heard Trump say it himself, he, he, he's going to be a president because people don't love me. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> didn't you say people don't love him? He just wants people to love him. He didn't lay out an agenda. No, not at all. His agenda is just he wants people to love him and he wants to own the libs again and he wants to they're, they're not changing the playbook they're using the same playbook and the same platform from 2016 All right um, so Democrats are traumatized so we need to hear some tough love from somebody who's not always right about stuff uh, to be honest but uh James Carville um, has something to say and uh, I guess I'll play the clip but Democrats by nature are nervous. They, they're so traumatized by 2016, they have to get over it, all right? And I get this all the time. Oh, James, don't, please don't say that, because if people think we're going to win, they're not going to come out and vote. That's idiotic. We're going to win. What do you want me to do? We're going to win. What do you want that guy to do? Nothing. I want him to win, because that's what he's going to do. That's what he says. And uh, there's another clip, too, of James Carville. Uh, let's see if it plays here. I, I've i never been this optimistic. James, let me start with the obvious question. How are the Democrats going to blow it? Uh, I don't know if we can do it. I, I mean, I, 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 I think of ways. I get up in the middle of the night and I said, "Now nah, that can't happen. Look, he's beaten. He's feeble. He's frail. frail. He's a failure. He's fat. He's going to think of the next F word that you want, you know, <laughs> something else. The question is not just to beat Trump. We have to eradicate Trumpism. Trumpism. Yeah, yeah. eradicate it. He's fat. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty great. I'm, you know, I choose these clips because I know I'm going to have to listen to them, and I'm going to enjoy listening to that he's one. Fat. I love that. He's feeble. He's frail. He's, he's fat. fat. Feeble, frail, you and come up fat. with the next F word. <laughs> F, F, F. So there's something that should be mentioned he's really quick, fat. and that's that James Carville was wrong in 2016. However, he's trying to say that even though he was wrong, then this is different. Yeah. Hopefully, he's right. Yeah. Feeble, frail, and fat. Right. He can't win. Yeah. And Bernie called this guy a political hack, so, you know, there's oh. a little bit of intra, intra party uh, warfare going on Bernie here. Bernie Sanders says you're a political Heck, that's right, and that's not something I I would ever want. Uh, that would just kill, that would shatter my soul if he if he called me that. But uh, uh, anyway, this you know this has been a the Brain and Moham show. Brain and Moham show. Thanks for tuning in. We'll Thank see you, you next week. For tuning in. We'll see you next week.